Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My dear brothers and sisters, today in this episode, we are listening about the wilderness experience. Now, what is this wilderness experience? Desert experience. In the Bible, we see two central themes. One is God's presence, anointing, power of God, prosperity, riches, and well-being on one side. The other side we see temptations, satanic attack, demonic oppressions, obsessions, possessions, destruction, and all kinds of worldly evil presence, a life away from God. In this episode, what I'm presenting before you is a day-to-day -day experience of you and of me. For every Christian who wants to follow Jesus, for everyone who wants to walk in the ways of Jesus, and everyone who wants to live as a Christian must experience these two different uh, situations of life at one point or the other in your life. Now, these two central themes are explained in the Bible figuratively like anointing, Holy Spirit, power of God, presence of God, prosperity, all the positive sides of life in the spirit are explained in the Bible with the different examples and different examples. I want to just read before you uh, just one or two. I read here Psalms 1 verse uh, 3 I read over here. They are like a trees planted by the streams of water which yield fruit in its due season, and the leaves do not wither, and all that they do, they prosper. I read another one. Psalm 92, verse 12, 13, and 14, I want to read before you. It continues to explain the spiritual and the positive dimension of your life and of human life as such. Psalm 92, I read over here, um, which is actually continuously explaining to us the another dimension of human life. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in the Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of God. In all which they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of saps. I have presented before you two examples. Trees planted by the side of the river. The leaves are always green. They produce the fruit in the due season. They don't wither. They are prosperous. Very good. The other dimension I want to bring before you, my dear friend, that is, let us uh, read two passages. One is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse uh, 43. I want to read before you. The evil spirit. Away from God. Matthew, chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit has gone out of the person, it wanders through the waterless region looking for a resting place. And when it finds none, it will return to my house from where I came. What the Bible says here, the evil spirit wanders around waterless region 
dry the places, desert places. We read over here. And uh, I want to further read over here, Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 12. Interesting. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by the Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on Jesus. See here, the evil spirit, the negativity, and the presence of devil away from God are expressed by dryness, by desert, where no prosperity, no growth, nothing. Two important themes in the Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now remember, my dear friends, we are going one step deeper into this two sides of experiences. What as a Christian we need to understand is what is the test, what is the temptation? Usually people are confused, confused. We don't understand why tests are coming, why temptations are coming. From where tests and temptations come into my life? And what can I do? How to distinguish, how to understand this phenomena of different dimensions, experiences of one human life? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now, most people, listen carefully, most people, quite often, they are tempted. And temptations will lead you into sin, into difficulties, into disturbances, and all kinds of distractions. That's why, in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, what? The evil, or rather Jesus uses the words called, uh, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have life in abundance. So evil spirit, when it comes, remember, it is meant for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And the Bible uses the word only, only to steal, only to kill, only to destroy. This is the purpose of the devil. And further, when people are really being tempted, my dear friends, quite often I have heard people saying that uh, when we read James, James chapter 1, uh, words, uh, when we read, it's a 12, 13, and uh, 14. Yes, I read over here, James chapter 1. Blessed is anyone who endures temptations. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now this is important. Let no one when tempted should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by devil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by this. Then what has been desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and the sin, when it is fully developed, gives birth to death. See the continuous progress of the work of devil. What the Bible says over here is, God tempts no one. And when someone tempted, one should never say, I am being tempted by God. For God tempts no one. This is what we need to understand. 
As you listen to this word, please get it in your mind to clear that God does not tempt anyone. God does not tempt with evil. God is not our destroyer. He is not our enemy. But what happens? One is tempted by one's own desires and enticed by the desires. We are attracted and pulled into sin and the sin leads to death and destruction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is actually the work of the devil. Temptation is a work of devil it disturbs, it distracts, leads you into sin, into problems, difficulties, struggles, pain, sorrows, division, and death. Never ever temptation is for your growth, your welfare, your anointing, and your experiences with God. On the other hand, God tests people. Yes, yes. God tests his people. There's a big difference between temptations and tests. Now, the question is, my dear friends, why does God test people? When we turn to the book of Deuteronomy, my dear friends, chapter 8, verse 2, when we read, we have the answer in the Bible why God tests. I read over here. Do book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse uh, 2. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you through the 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, test you to know what was in your heart and whether or not you would obey and keep his commandments. The Lord tests the people to know three things. One thing, Bible says, the Lord will test you to make you humble before God. When we are proud and arrogant and hard-hearted and stubborn, Bible says, the Lord will test you to teach you humility and the Lord will make you humble. Second, what Bible says here is to know what is in your heart. Because every human heart is devious. It is very secret. It is very hidden. We see the human persons, we see the people by the externals, but we cannot judge. We cannot understand what is within every human person in every human heart. Bible says over here, he will test people to know what is in the heart. And number three, what Bible says over here, book of Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse two, whether you obey the commandments of God or not. God wants to know whether you obey the commandments of God or not. For to know three things, the Lord will test. And remember, God tests his people. God will test his people. I want to read before you book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. After these things, God tested Abraham. And he said to them, Abraham, he said, here I am. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. Remember, God tested Abraham. God tested Moses. God tested prophet Isaiah. God tested prophet Elijah. And all people, my dear friends, the Lord will test and the Lord will check. Now remember, um, book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. My child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for testing. Set your heart right and be steadfast, and do not be impetuous in times 
of calamities. The Lord will test his people. Now, are you wondering why the Lord is testing? A small example. My brother, my sister, you go for shopping. You go for purchase. You go for marketing. Remember, whatever you purchase, even vegetables and fruits and clothes and any other materials from the market, you test everything, right? Any fruit, any vegetables, any materials, when you buy, when you do shopping, you test everything. The quality of the material. Is this good? Is this bad? Is it really original or duplicate? How good it is? How bad it is? Without testing, without checking the materials in the market, no one brings anything at home. After all, material things always perish. They get broken. They really get destroyed. However, we check, we test. The Bible says, I will test people who are acceptable before me. Before me. But, you know, interestingly, my dear friends, Bible calls David a man after the heart of God. What a great word. David, Bible calls a man after the heart of God. A man who understands God's heart. A man who feels with God's heart. But then what the Bible says over here is, my dear friends, book of Psalms, chapter 38, verse 9 and 10. O Lord, all my longing is known to you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs. My strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it has been gone from me. Now, see what David says here. A man after the heart of God, a man who is anointed by God is saying, God, my sighing, sighing is a deep expression of a person's uh, real struggles. My sighing, Lord, you know. My longing, waiting for the fulfillment, Lord, you know. The eyesight has been failed. My strength is, is vanished. See, a man after the heart of God actually is feeling this way, my dear friends. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when we go further, my dear friends, in the Bible, the test and the temptation. I hope you have understood what's the temptation by the devil and the test by God. Now, Temptations a person will experience in three dimensions of life. Number one, in the bodily dimension, a person will experience temptations and tests. In the emotional, psychological dimension, a person will experience the temptations and tests. And in the spiritual dimension, a person will experience temptations and tests. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you take number one, I take before you Jesus as an example. For he was tested. He was tempted by the devil. Therefore, we know in the Gospel of Luke, when we read chapter 4, actually we continue to read this particular book of Satan, book of devil. Now, the first temptation was that Jesus was hungry and famished for 40 days. He ate nothing. He drank nothing. And the Satan came and said, turn the stones into bread and eat. A physical need and for its fulfillment, Satan is tempting Jesus to misuse his power and authority. Physical dimension. The psychological dimension, my dear friends, 
Satan took him to the pinnacle of the temple and told him, if you are the son of God, jump down from here. Your angels will guard and protect you. Now Satan knows Jesus is the son of God, but still he is questioning. My dear friends, if you are the son of God, it's an emotional blackmail of a challenge. If you are a son of God, if you are a man, if you are a woman, challenging my basic existence as a man, as a woman. Actually, this question, if you are, it touches somewhere the deep depth of a person's integrity. Number three, the spiritual dimension. Satan took him to a mountain, showed in one instant the whole kingdom and its world and its glory, and told him, if you fall down and worship me, I will give you this. Now remember, the worship that belongs to God, Satan is demanding that worship. A temptation of the person to replace what belongs to God to the Satan. Satan wants worship. Satan wants adoration. Saint, Satan actually wants the people to obey him, not God. Therefore, as a man, as a woman, as you listen to this word, my dear brother or sister, you will experience. You are experiencing and you had experienced these physical temptations and tests, emotional, psychological temptations and tests and the spiritual dimension what we are going through. Now the important thing is my dear friends in all these trials and temptations when a person depends on God he will not depart from you. When we read, it's, it's actually, I really like it. It's very, very uh, meaningful. And the first day when I, uh, when I heard this, when I read this, it really went into my heart and, and it touched me. I read over here, book of Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. Though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide from any more from you but your eyes shall see your teacher. And when you turn to the left or the right, you will hear a word from behind your ears saying, this is the way, walk into it. Now, what does it mean, my dear friends? In the times of temptations, in time of tests, the Lord does not remain hidden from you. His presence is there. But in temptations, you are not aware we don't feel the presence of God guiding, protecting and leading. We feel the Lord has left me. I am away from my God. But then in the test, the Lord is there with you. Job was tested. He overcame. And then Bible says, Job 42 verse 10, he received double portion of the prosperity property he had. Abraham was tested and he became the father of nations, father of faith. But always temptations will destroy you, will finish you and completely annihilate you. Let us be clear in the spiritual journey of life. When am I tempted by the devil? When am I tested by God? So that we stand strong and always blessed, anointed and prosperity belongs to us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.